Hello, Christopher here. We will have a look at some Rust today that I think that people who do C Sharp, like me, will love or at least find um, good. It won't be the same thing that I've talked about before, how Rust is faster and use less memory. It will be about benefits for the developer, uh, like you and me. And uh, yeah. Let's get going. I have prepared some code here. I'm looking at here this way. That's where I have my screen. So first we will look at some traits. And what I like about the trait system they have in Rust compared to what we have in C Sharp. I know you can't compare interfaces to traits one to one, but I am going to do that a little bit anyway, because I you work a lot with interfaces in C sharp and uh, if you don't have your interfaces I would not like to do it probably because we like interfaces and uh, I think we would like traits even more but one thing that is bothering me in C sharp is that I cannot implement interfaces for classes already created because they have to be put there when you create the class that is not a problem in rust in rust you can implement the interface or you can the trait on a class after the fact let's see what i have done here first i create a vector of um, integers and then i have made rails functions people talk about rails being so nice to work with because they have first second and third and whatever so i thought mm, i think rust can do that too so first already exists on the vector but i have added second and third and the way this works is that i have made a trait for vectors and implemented it for vectors. I mean, I do not own vectors, but still I can add functionality to it. And the implementation is not very important, but the fact that I can actually do this is, maybe we should have a look at something that is a little bit more usable. And uh, that's uh, this thing I have here, where I have a string that, looks a bit like basic authentication and I want to send it to identify function but in the identify function it take a takes an input of identity which is a trait but you see this is a string slice and if I look at identity I have implemented my own trait here for the string slice. So if it's a string slice, I do this, uh, try to parse it. And if I can, I return some with a credential, otherwise none. So that enables me to send in simple strings here. I also show down here what happens when I do the none. We can actually run this. I get some warning, but you see first, second, and third, they return the values that the that we are expecting. And then credentials found, that's the first here. And then it's no credentials found for the second one. And then I went a little bit more Railsy here and I implemented their um, relative date methods. So five days ago, this was made by implementing two traits, one on top of U8 and one on top of duration. So days is implemented for U8. And then we have a go that was implemented for duration, which returns a date that is five days ago. That's what I had to show about trades. I know these examples, they weren't very mind blowing, but I bet you can see multiple places where you can use this already. 
So let's uh, continue. Another place where I think Rust has an advantage is in the enums. In C sharp, we have very basic enums. They can just be a value. But in Rust, you can actually attach data to these enums, which means if we look at this current user here, it can be anonymous or a user. And then I just put type user to show that I can put a type uh, my own struct in here. So if it's anonymous, it doesn't contain anything more than the fact that it's uh, anonymous. But if you have a user, then you get the username and a set of roles here. Or if it's a type user, you get the same data, but now it's uh, in a struct instead. And this is awesome, I say, because so many times I want to put data together with my enums. But you can't in C sharp. And I just run. So let's run this example here. And uh, yeah, you can see everything works. And this is the data that we get. And the way it works is uh, nothing fancy, really. Just create it as anything else. And uh, yeah, the enums, you can do pattern matching on them. So here, if I do if let, and this checks that if the typed user, which we know is a typed user, it will get the data, otherwise it won't do anything. So yeah, I don't know if we need to look any more at this to know that it's awesome. Great, let's move on. Next thing I want to talk about is clarity. When we are writing our C sharp, we don't really know if the function that we are sending objects to is going to do something bad with it. If we can really trust this this uh, object that we had after the function call, because that object might have been uh, mutated. But in Rust, you have to be explicit. You have a contract. So if we do a simple borrow like we do here, where I send down this person here, I know that this function will not mutate it because we have a contract. The same goes for mutability. Like if I have a function that takes in a mutable reference, that function should not do that unless it's actually going to mutate it. So I should expect it to be mutated. And then we have the move and the move just, I mean, it tells the developer and the other function that here you go, you own this, you do whatever you want with it. And I also say that I'm not going to use this anymore after I've sent it. And if I were to use it, if I uncomment this, you see, I have a compilation error here because I cannot use it after it has been moved. So the explicitly, explicitly, explicitly. So the clarity that we have here in the communication between, uh, you know, developer and developer is outstanding. It's, it's very, very nice. You might need to type a little bit more, but I think this is uh, an advantage. Okay, let's move on. What are we doing now? We are looking at type inference. And um, Rust is great at inferring types. If we look here, we have created a slice and it's four numbers and they are U8s. Why are they U8s, might, you might ask. Oh, Rust figures that out because it knows that print numbers takes in a slice of U8s. If I change this to U16s, you can see it changed up here. Now this slice here is U16s. I did not change this. But 
the compiler follows the code and finds that, oh, this one wants U16. So that's what it is. If we look at this get array here, this is a, a recent addition to the Rust language, but you can get a array from a function. So you give it a lambda and then it will generate an array for you. And then you might think, hey, how does it know how many items the array should ask, have? And uh, I'm, I'm happy that you asked that because that's uh, what I'm demoing here. And it's, uh, it's from the return type. If I, if I change this to some other number, it will change. So let's first run this. You can see one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And that's the two slices that I have. And if I change this one to be six instead, and now you will see that I get six of them. And the type is six of them. And let's say that I want this to be U16s. Whoops. Then uh, it will become U16s here. Magic, what can I say? And I didn't show it here, but if you do collect, it's uh, something you can do on iterators. You can do maps and stuff like you do selecting C sharp. Um, in C sharp, you do to dictionary, to list, to whatever. In Rust, you do collect, and uh, you you just put the type that you want to collect to. And if it can, if it has a method to do that, implemented, it will just do it for you. And you can put the type either on the variable itself or it will find it from the next usage of it. So whatever style you want to use, it will just do that. I, I like that it's so smart here and uh, the types, they are printed out here. So that's another great thing about Rust. And now let's have a look at one last thing and that is object construction. Rust does not have constructors, but there is a convention to use new or have a function called new on the struct, struct that you can call to get an, uh, a structure. So here I have implemented this new function or method on the struct that I've created called async struct and the new function is async. It's also returning an option. These are both things that you cannot do in C sharp. You cannot return null from a constructor. You can throw an exception, but you can't return null. And your constructor cannot be async. Here I do both. So let's run this and it's constructing and it's sleeps for three seconds and then we get the instance uh, and it's some since it was an option. This is, could be seen as cheating a little bit because you could actually do something like this if you had a static method or something on that class to build an instance for you. That could both be async and return uh, optional but the, it wouldn't be the convention of the language to use that because you would have to use the, yeah, the static method that you created instead of the regular way of doing it. Another thing, a bonus thing that I can see here is that await keyword is after. It's like a method call almost. I mean, it's not the call, but still the keyword is put afterwards. And this is good when it comes to chaining, because I could just keep chaining here and I, I would get stuff in C sharp. I would have to move this. This is not valid, but I will do it anyway. I have to move it like here and then I do this and then I continue. And if this thing here, 
was another await, I would have to continue doing this if I wanted to do this. Whereas in Rust, I would just keep um, awaiting it like this. Bonus. Great. Now we have uh, looked at some things. I might as well say this too, because it was also not mentioned, but the imports are explicit. And this is really nice when it comes to code reviews or other situations where you're not in your editor and you cannot control click on something to know where it came from. Because I do a lot of code reviews at my job and um, then I sometimes don't know where a class came from. If the developer was responsible for how that class is working or behaving, I I would I had to go and dig deeper to find out where it came from. All I see is the namespaces that were imported. But that gets even worse when we have the global imports in C sharp. In Rust, it's more explicit. I mean, you can put in use module star to get everything from that module but it's it's not commonly used only in preludes but um, yeah so you usually are very explicit and this is great when you're browsing code like on github or something and you want to want like check where did this come from you just scroll up and you see oh it's from this module and javascript does this also very well but c sharp mm, namespace and you get everything and now they are even hiding it so that's it um, if you are already doing rust and you feel that i missed something that should have been brought up here feel free to leave it in the comments or if it's the other way around like oh i really like this in c sharp but it's not that great in rust then i would be happy if you put a comment about that too because it's very interesting just to see what does people like and what do they not like? This is the things that I like, that I as a C Sharp developer like. So thanks for watching. Bye bye.